um, pushing students to solve problems, it's probably pretty tough for them as they're learning how to do it. But once they figure it out, I think they feel invincible. And I think in a lot of ways what I'm doing is trying to empower students to have that feeling of invincibility so when they face a tough problem, they know how to solve it. My view is that a class like organic chemistry can really be a vehicle to help students learn some problem-solving skills and also gain confidence in being able to solve uh, really tough problems because that's what we need them to do uh, when they graduate from college, when they leave a place like UCLA. We, we need these people to be the problem-solvers of tomorrow. The position here has been a fun one where there's a forever changing balance between teaching and research. So on one hand, sometimes I'll be teaching a large undergraduate course, sometimes a graduate course, which will be smaller. But throughout the year, it never stops. I have a research lab that's operating, and it's typically between 15 and 20 graduate students earning their doctorate. So that is happening at all times. And there's education throughout uh, both the classroom teaching, of course, but also education in the research laboratory. For whatever reason, organic chemistry has had this image of being a weed out class, something that's really difficult, requires a lot of memorization. But what I think what makes it really difficult is it's sort of like learning a new language. That's really what we expect students to do is to pick up a new language and then be able to uh, speak that language with a high level of fluency. I always thought it was the hardest college class out there. But what I heard him was that if you took the course with him, it became much more doable, it became much more approachable, it wasn't as scary. I'm an experimentalist, so the way I do a little bit of experimenting now these days is to experiment with different educational techniques and to see what works and what doesn't work. You know, he had one lecture that was teaching us about how retrosynthesis works, and he compared it to a sandwich. He brought actual sandwich materials to class and had two people go up to the front and build a sandwich, and as they were building it, he would explain how, like, this is what the lettuce is, this is what the bread is, and having that interactive environment just sort of like made it fun to learn all this. It was also cool to have so many people actively want to participate. A lot of times a professor asks a question and, you know, it's just crickets, nobody's raising their hand. But in Neil's class, you'd have like 15 hands go up. And I've never seen that before. When I started here, I had really mixed feelings about having to teach large undergraduate courses. And in graduate school, I spent so much time studying very challenging, hardcore organic chemistry. But I was pleasantly surprised, and teaching at the undergraduate level turned out to be a lot more fun than I ever could have imagined. When I was uh, in, in high school at some point, I was taking an English class, and the teacher gave us an assignment. It was to write a, a haiku or something, right? And I went home and I did this, and, and I gave it to the teacher. So then the next day, she read it to the class, and she asked, then, if this person would like to be known, you should raise your hand. Everybody loved it. And I still didn't raise my hand. I didn't have the confidence to feel like whatever I had done was something creative or something valuable. I think really care for students, and I never want a student to be left behind, you know, somebody to fall under the radar for some reason. I think a lot of the teaching methods are geared towards including everybody, right, having a feeling of inclusivity and really making organic chemistry it's an experience for everybody. Organic chemistry is scary to your average student. And we got to this cool idea of, hey, let's make this into a game. So the app is called Backside Attack. 
and the purpose of it is to teach basic concepts of organic chemistry to incoming college students. Because we were stuck between the, the I and the, and the SEG butox side, remember? We're That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, recently I've been working on a lot of different projects and they do all have a common theme, right? It's typically to expand the love for organic chemistry. That's something that, that is very exciting to me is the idea to impact the students across the world. Here. And then puts down. Bromine breaks off, this fully attaches. Yep. Yeah. Neil doesn't look at undergrads and just say, okay, you're undergrads, learn all of this, you can't do anything, like take an exam and that's it. Neil genuinely cares about his students as people. He had a barbecue last year for the app and going to these barbecues, interacting with him, seeing him as a mentor, as a friend, makes you feel like you can actually do something and make an impact in this world with what you're learning. I started raising my hand in that class. I wasn't scared anymore because I knew that Professor Garg wouldn't judge my question. And he would take his time, no matter what the question was, to answer it. As I have really learned the ropes of organic chemistry, I think there's so much creativity in the process of what we do. And one of the things I found most enjoyable is trying to draw out creativity from people who perhaps like me, students who are like me, who didn't quite realize that they had it in them uh, to be creative. Okay, I'm just gonna sit on you for <laughs> If I would describe Neil in five words, it would be energetic, inspiring, caring, meticulous, genuine, successful, funny. If I were to sum myself up in one word, it'd probably be tired, certainly not bored. <laughs>